Hi, this is Yu Jiewang from SkyMizer. Today, I'd like to introduce an end-to-end -end crossbar based DCIM simulator, Onyx CIM. This project uses the Open Neural Network Compiler as a front end to parse an Onyx model and generate workloads for the CIM simulator. We also provide a detailed crossbar device error model in our simulator. The goal is to provide a modeling framework to facilitate CIM research projects. This project is a joint work with the Embedded Computing Lab at National Taiwan University. Professor Jia Lingyang leads the research team, and it's our pleasure to work with her team on this project. In this tutorial, we will talk about the project overview first, and then Dr. Xiang Yunzhen from Seneca will go through the device error model in details. After that, we will get to the hands-on sections, where we will demonstrate how to build and run the simulator. In our design, the simulator is extendable. We will cover two examples. One example shows how to create a user application using the pre-built library. The other example shows how to support a new operator in the simulator. The motivation behind this project is to create a basic framework for modeling CIM designs. The ONIC framework provides an easy way to connect AI models and hardware execution. It has a generic runtime library for ONIC operator support. There are many research projects that focus on the crossbar device models. For those projects, a full model simulation is preferred to collect statistics from pre-trained models. To achieve this goal, we integrate ONIC with a CIM hardware simulator that contains a CIM device error model. Our simulator is compatible with the ONIX version 1.3. It has two execution modes, standalone mode and an ONIC mode. In the standalone mode, the simulator is built as a library. In the ONIC mode, the simulator takes an ONIX model, runs a simulation, and reports the result. The simulator is also extendable. Users can add new operators or modify the hardware simulator for their own purpose. Let's go a little deeper in the CIM hardware simulator. A computing unit may have several crossbar units. There are three components in each crossbar unit. A wall line driver, a crossbar array, and a bit line receiver. The wall line driver will accept an input vector x and quantize the value into given length of bits. In each cycle, it will pass a number of bits into the crossbar array, do the MAC operation, and send the result to the BLI receiver. The BLI receiver will add and shift the result cycle by cycle to get the final result. In our implementation, users may specify different configuration in the crossbar unit for experimental purpose. In the output of the crossbar array, Users may inject arrows using the provided device error model. In the next section, Dr. Jen will talk about the device error model in details. Let's hand over to her. We use the NVN error and new module in the OR thing to model device induced errors. This module estimates the error rates of each sum of product results per bit line in a crossbar of RM based computing memory accelerator. It takes error-related hardware configurations as inputs and outputs the error rates of its possible sum of product values when various number of word lines are turned on. In a crossbar array, several hardware parameters affect the error rates and our simulation module takes these parameters into consideration. First, our cell is not reliable due to the randomness of the conductive filament generation when voltage is applied across an RN cell. Recent work shows that the resistance hysteference of different states in an RN cell follow the log normal distribution. When the current distribution of different states are overlapped, it is hard to distinguish between different states at the overlap region. The size of the overlap region is determined by device parameters, such as the mean resistance and resistance deviation of each state. Second, the percent current deviation accumulates on the build line, and the error rate increases when higher number of word lines are activated. 
Due to this accuracy issue and power constraints, only a limited number of worn lines are turned on in a crossbar array within a single cycle in a practical design. We call this per cycle operation unit as OU, and the size of OU impacts the error rate. Third, the non-ideal current sensing components such as analog to digital converter ADC or sense amplifier SA also affect the error rate. The error-related parameters of a non-ideal ADC or SA include the bit resolution and the sensing offset, which is equal to the safety carbon sensing voltage, that is dVSA, divided by a constant related to the sensing speed of the sense amplifier, that is alpha. For example, in our error simulation module, we implement the dual reference sensing scheme. It compares the accumulated current on the bin line with the reference current of the higher and lower states to determine the readout value, that is, compare A and B in the figure. The correctness cannot be guaranteed when the difference between A and B is less than the sensing offset. Our device error model takes all these error-related impact factors into consideration when estimating the error rates of each sum of product results per bit line in a crossbar array. To estimate the error rates of each sum of product results per bit line, we first use the user-specified mean resistance and resistant deviation of each cell state to build the probability density function of the log normal per cell current distribution. We then use the Monte Carlo sampling method to build the accumulated current distribution on a bit line within an OU. That is, for each possible sum of product result, we use Monte Carlo to get current samples from the current distribution of high resistance and low resistance states, and add these currents together. Such bin line current distribution is generated for each possible number of activated word lines within an OU. Finally, we estimate the error rates of each sum of product results based on the user-specified sensing scheme. We generate an error table for each possible number of activated word lines within an OU. In the error table, for each possible sum of product results, we calculate the percentage of sensing as the correct value and all possible incorrect values. The estimated error rates are written into an output error file. Here we show how to run the device error model written in Python. The command line has several input parameters, including the OU size, the mean resistance and resistance deviation of low resistance and high resistance states, and also the sensing offset and the bit resolution of ADC or SA. These parameters are specified by users and users can adapt these values to analyze the impact of each parameter to the error rates and conduct design space exploration. After running the device error model, users will get the error rates stored in two file formats. One is the reader-friendly file format, and another is the file format that will enable faster error injection into neural network models. Let's get to the hands-on section. Now we are going to talk about building and running the simulator. First, please make sure that your host machine has Docker installed. In order to simplify the process, in a Docker image, we pre-install all packages that ONIC and CIM simulator depend on. Therefore, we can easily compile and run the simulator in the Docker container. If you need to compile the project outside the Docker container, you will need to check all the dependencies by yourself. Now you can start the container and mount the project folder with permission parameters. You can just copy the command from the project readme. After the Docker container is ready, we can start to build the project in standalone mode. Now create a build folder and use CMake to set up parameters. Then start to compile. Compilation would be finished in a few minutes. After that, you can use make install and LD config to install the project as a library in the container. You will have two parameters in the compilation command. For the first parameter, there are two build types that you can choose from, release and debug. Debug type will give you more information during simulation. The other parameter is test. If you turn it on, a set of test cases will be put in test folder. 
We will build a release version for this example. After the project is built, you can use this main program to test if the build is successful. Please remember to add cimconfig.json as a parameter. If you see the same result appearing as this picture shows, then you have finished building in the standalone mode. In order to run the simulator in Onic mode, we first need to install the CIM library we have built previously, and then link the library and build the Onic compiler. After the Onic binary is built, we can use Onic CIM command to execute Onic with CIM library. Here is an example to run a MNIST model with C Onic CIM. You can find the command in the project readme. If you see the result appearing as this picture shows, then the Onic mode simulation is successful. Let's talk about how to write a program by using standalone library. There are three steps. Initialize simulator, decompose model into operators, and set up inference. There is a main file in the example folder. You can open the file to follow this instruction. You need to add these header files in your code. We can initialize the simulator instance after the namespace declaration. The instance is named as ops in this example. Then you need to decompose a model into operators. Here is our example with three operators, convolution, reshape, and GEMM. You can see the attributes for each operator in this slide. There are three steps to set up inference. First, we need to prepare input, output, and activation tensors. Second, specify operator attributes. Third, call the Onyx CIM API to get output tensors. For the input tensor, we need to use a thin type vector to define the tensor shape, and use an element type array to store the tensor values. Repeat the same step for the other tensors, including weight, bias, and output. Next, we need to specify operator attributes. According to operator spec, the attributes including dilations, group, kernel, paths, and strides for convolution operator. We can simply set up all the attributes by the following rules. An integer shows as a const thin type variable. An integer list shows as a thin type vector. After all the tensors and attributes have been set up, we can pass all the tensors as parameter when calling the count float function. That's all about how to write a program to use the Onyx CIM standalone library. Sometimes users need to add new operator support. We are going to talk about how to do that next. There are four steps to implement a new operator. Create a new operator class. Register to desired factory class. Add the new file to the building system. Rebuild the project. For creating a new operator class, you can find the templates placed in the lib folder. Now let's implement a MadMule operator for example. Please copy the head file and rename it. We need to replace all variables with dollar sign. Change dollar operator name into MadMule. Copy the MadMule operator argument list in the abstract up factory header file and replace dollar argument list in the template. You can add private members for your own purpose. We add an output tensor and two matrices to implement MadMule. Copy and rename the template C file and follow the same logic. Change dollar operator name into MadMule. Copy the manual argument list in the factory header file and replace the dollar argument list with it. And use constructor to initialize private members that you need. We pass values of input tensors to matrices. In the simulate function, you can do the computation and copy the result to output. 
Once a header file and a C file are ready, the operator class is created. After creating the operator class, we need to register it to the factory class. Add in the abstract up factory header, copy template from command, and replace the dollar sign variables in the factory C file. First, include the operator header that we created earlier. And we need to implement the create manual up function. Copy the template command and replace dollar sign variable again. Don't forget to remove variable types in second argument list to match the format. Lastly, you can simply add the new file to CMake list. After all the steps, we can rebuild the project. To run a test cast, you can run our test cast matmule layer in the example folder. Thanks for joining this session.